Hi everybody, we are talking today about core imaging um, and its relation to uh, refractive surgery and why core imaging is so important for refractive surgery today. Uh, this is the question that we are uh, about to answer or trying to answer today. Uh, why both are so related and why it's uh, so important if we are uh, talking about refractive surgery. Uh, let us going backwards, a step backwards uh, into the optics that told us that the, the eye refractive power is about six diopter, but also uh, they say that the cornea present the most powerful part or the most most power, powerful diopteric power for the eye, forming about 40 to 45 per percent, 40 to 40 uh, five diopters of the total. Uh, eye power and the lens only about uh, 20 diopter. This is why it's so important for uh, for myopia, hypermetropia, astigmatism, or any type of refractive error that what we want to treat uh, could be treated uh, through dealing with the cornea or th uh, upon the cornea. Uh, and this is why the refractive surgery become uh, so important because it can induce or significantly uh, change the status of the refraction of the eye. So we have to image what we are going to treat. Imaging passed through stages. stages uh, historically, keratometry was the first uh, that was invented, but it's only capable of capturing three uh, millimeter of central cornea. And actually this is uh, uh, still crude and uh, it represents only about 60 percentage of corneal surface, which uh, provides so poor information to be dealt upon. Uh, second stage was, was keratoscopy and was a revolution at that stage, uh, representing about or uh, capturing about 70 percent of corneal surface, but still it needs a major a major difference in the core distortion of the corneal surface, like uh, three degrees of the of the uh, of astigmatism, to be uh, captured. Then a revolution through invention of video keratoscopy and using a camera and a video device recording the process of capturing. And uh, this was represented by Allegretto topolizer, which was and still uh, be used uh, to treat some corneal or surface, uh, surface irregularities of the cornea. Uh, through a placido disc uh, uh, projected, uh, projecting a Myers, alighting Myers into the cornea and then recapturing uh, that image into uh, the device. Actually, this camera was in the center. This is why the center three millimeters of the cornea couldn't be captured uh, well. This is a normal uh, printout uh, of the this stabilizer showing a steep areas by red color and flat areas by uh, more cool colors. Then, at the last stage, uh, and this is the stage that we are talking about, is the elevation-based topography systems. All the previous uh, can capture the surface, but these devices can uh, add a tomography, which is measuring the depth and elevation. Uh, many devices uh, are present uh, nowadays, like OrbScan. OrbScan using a slit scanning beam and Pentacam, shown like uh, camera, Galilee, Topolizer, CSO is a nice device, and Tommy uh, Japan. This is a picture of uh, the well-known orb scan using a slit lamp uh, here, a slit lamp uh, uh, measuring, uh, frequent measuring, and this is uh, the CSO, which is uh, a marvelous device combining both a Placido disc and a Schumflag camera, and this is the well-known Pentacam, which uses Schumflag uh, camera uh, capturing uh, images from all around the cornea. And this is how the printout of the Pentacam today's uh, will be uh, printed and uh, as you can see there is uh, a, mul a many many information so many information that we are trying to simplify today in a clinical or a st clinical stepwise approach first of all we are dealing about we are talking about a uh, sagittal map which is the ordinary topography map here you can see as a scale uh, start from cool colors to um, to steep colors uh, into uh, the blue, into the red colors. Uh, here's the powers of the cornea, uh, reading about 47 diopters um, of uh, diopteric powers. 
uh, this can be, be provide more information about astigmatism, like here with the rule astigmatism vertically and the flat astigmatism or flat uh, part of the cornea here, and can be mathematically represented uh, by the device showing again the red color for the uh, astigmatism or the steep axis and blue color for the flat axis and here you can see the uh, mathematical calculation of the astigmatism for uh, this map uh, also you can see uh, uh, again it's through astigmatism in another, another uh, capture um, um, here there is oblique astigmatism again you can see many different here in anchomorphism, which can tell you uh, that these eyes are mostly normal when you find right and left eyes with the same picture, but in reverse uh, mirror like uh, shape, like here. Another protrusion here with a hot colors here denoting about 50 to 60 doctors in the center. This is so suspicious of keratoconus which are a major contraindication for refractive surgery. Another point here to be mentioned that, that this plank quite uh, part uh, denoting that this part can couldn't be captured and actually you shouldn't rely on that uh, image on a picture like that. You should recapture this patient again. Another, uh, uh, another image with C part uh, in the index of the cornea. Here, the same uh, with the rule or uh, oblique astigmatism, but actually this is not in a straight line, it's a skewed line. And this is most uh, susceptible or suspicious uh, uh, suspicious image, denoting either uh, um, the capture, capture is not taken in the, uh, in the right way, or there is a uh, suspicious of, uh, of uh, keratoconus. Another well-known uh, pelus margin regeneration with kissing birds uh, picture, the well-known picture. The second uh, map is the elevation map and actually it's it's a combined uh, map for the front surface and for the back surface. Actually, there is a, there is a surface that uh, computed by the computer is a virtual surface, any point above or any point uh, down to uh, this virtual surface uh, could considered flat or steep meridian. Here, the front surface of the cornea, and this is the back, could be studied uh, simultaneously, showing no difference uh, be between this cornea and the reference, and this means this is a normal cornea. Here, the, uh, this uh, hourglass appearance denoting there is astigmatism and no abnormal uh, numbers here. Again, this is uh, our class again, but there is a major difference here in numbers and so high numbers, so hot numbers here. So this is another suspicious for Kratokonos case. This is the same case we have previously uh, saw in the previous slide. And, th and this is the beauty of Pentacam here. Uh, so you can point your finger here and here and here and here. The four fingers can point to the same error of a steep cornea, just denoting, or mostly, this is a Kratokonos case. This is the same as brief slide, but the, here is the beauty of the ring. I bought ring here, and now you can see how this steep cornea in the brief slide become more flatter and more flatter effect here all around uh, those pictures. This is another, uh, this is a back elevation map. We have studied before and we have mentioned. Actually, you shouldn't be uh, scared of these numbers, except if, if it's more than 70 uh, microns uh, difference more, or 18. Another here, there, there is a steep uh, area here, and also a change in shape, which is called the tank or the protrusion, uh, taking a tank appearance. This is so suspicious for Kratokons again. This is the beauty of mathematical calculations, uh, including uh, the well-known billion approach in display, showing some curves that we will talk about shortly. And another another image was back elevation, high back elevation. This is the map for the cornea thickness map, showing the beautiful scale of the cornea of uh, about 500, which is uh, most normal. It's considered thin cornea if it's less than uh, 470. This is another normal cornea, and 
here you can see the pupil center and uh, pachymetry apex and the sinus location mostly with the same microns. And this is the normal. Actually, when you, when you find the sinus location is more than 10 microns apart of the pupil center, you should suspect and or recapture again. Here, the sinus location here is, uh, is normal in its thickness, but actually it's displaced downwards. This is another suspicious for Kratokonis. Now a table uh, uh, representing corneal front analysis uh, showing the quality of the capture is okay, and the Q value, which is a sphericity representation of the cornea, should be between zero and uh, minus one. This is a normal. Now, the device uh, quality uh, could mention a uh, lead, uh, could mention a uh, fixation problem. Uh, when you see this, uh, or could mention data loss, when you see this, uh, this uh, box uh, highlighted, you should recapture your uh, images. Coordinate or coordinates we have mentioned before, the most important key is the why. Is the y is the vertical bin. When you see the y uh, or the i, the sense location is deviated downwards, downwards and nasally, you should suspect this uh, examination. Again, corneal uh, corneal coordinates shows uh, corneal volume, uh, ch chamber depth, and co could calculate uh, IOP uh, if there is a uh, refractive surgery on the cornea and you want to uh, uh, know what is the real IOP for that patient. Another mathematical calculation is called a thickness location percentage analysis uh, with two graphs, a thickness uh, spatial profile and the percentage thickness profile, which will show a smooth transmission through 500 uh, microns from the zero percentage or the zero center of the cornea till the periphery of the cornea. It should be a smooth transition. Here is normal again with a smooth transition. When you find this uh, abruptly or suddenly going downwards and outside uh, the normal uh, representation, mathematical representation, you should uh, suspect correct bonus. Actually, this print out uh, for a previous um, edition of Pentacam. This is not as updated. This is updated one with uh, some percentage or some calculations here. When you find uh, this deviation more than 1.5, more than 2, you should suspect and never touch that cornea for refractive surgery. Now, for taking a home message, no one parameter should be used in decision for a refractive surgery case. And it's a matter of studying of the whole picture and correlation with the clinical examination to go to um, the real evaluation of that uh, image and always always remember that we are not judging uh, uh, a piece of paper we are judging a person thank you